five to ten minutes uh, question answer uh, discussion if you want and I would invite you all to ac actually do that make use of it uh, for some it's the usual uh, uh, geospatial topics of course but others are new to it and might have other questions um, it's nine o'clock the okay. stage is yours thanks Thanks to came on early in this morning, and uh, the first presentation today is about how we can uh, use um, uh, deep learning to improve um, um, data quality from um, a data set, and here we took um, OpenStreetMap as an, as, as an example. So the goal of this presentation is to, to show uh, how we can uh, detect inconsistency between two data sets, and between these two data sets, we can um, highlight where uh, there is uh, some some issue that the human has to, to check um, to, to verify if everything is online, yes or no. How we do that with a deep learning um, 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 ecosystem, first is to, to, to bring imagery and the related levels um, and to uh, train a neural networks uh, with a loss function um, till we get a trained model uh, able to use um, the very same kind of imagery to predict an answer. And as since we get um, a trained model and the ability to, to produce imagery, uh, we are able then to compare between the prediction and the alternate data set. In our example, it will be here, OpenStreetMap. So that's the main uh, idea, uh, to train a neural network to predict and to compare. That's the point. Um, what we use to, to do so, um, we took robosat.pink um, with a um, um, semantic segmentation ecosystem, able to deal uh, especially with um, geospatial imagery and to perform some um, main feature as a, a dataset quality analysis, chain detection, and feature extraction. So th that will be um, the software, um, the tools uh, able to, um, to help us to do that. Uh, what's the spirit uh, um, about that uh, is to bring the latest um, uh, semantic segmentation uh, set of art uh, available in, um, in academic uh, field, but to translate it uh, in uh, an industrial uh, robust um, code uh, and to allow by a modular design um, to um, um, extend and to, um, to write only the part you could want um, to um, to, um, uh, to make it uh, your own. Uh, and uh, the other point uh, will be um, the ability to be integrate, well integrated in um, either OpenStreetMap or Mapbox uh, ecosystem and to be a geospatial compliant. Um, so um, what, uh, could, um, how could it um, help us to, to make it work? First is to, um, um, is to help the data preparation part. So um, as since we have um, um, several tools uh, able to, um, uh, to save us time uh, on the data preparation, it would be really helpful. Uh, the first is the ability to um, use either raster or um, web services um, to create imagery. Uh, the other uh, is the ability to use um, uh, GeoJSON um, or um, OpenStreetMap um, uh, files uh, to create the labels. And as uh, since we, we got both imagery and label, we are able to create our own training data set and so to play with. So uh, the first um, um, interesting part is to help us uh, to, um, to create easily um, a, tr a training data set. The other um, um, interesting part is the ability to reuse uh, already um, trained model um, who came from, um, um, from ImageNet, and there is a lot of model already able to, um, uh, to classify, um, um, to classify a feature from uh, an, Im an image. So this is uh, um, the internal representation of the, um, of the model uh, with uh, the first part with um, the encoder um, who took an image, encode it, and, and class uh, every pixel um, among um, the, um, the output feature we, uh, we want. Uh, and the other part is the decoder. And the, the point here is to reuse um, um, 
um, encoder pre-trained model to help us to be very accurate on the kind of uh, classification we, um, we want. Uh, and in this really um, example, we reuse ResNet50 um, as, a, as an encoder. Um, the, third, um, uh, the third part is the ability to, um, um, to perform accurate um, um, uh, training uh, from um, the couple. So here the image and the label are the input couple. Uh, and um, if we use a really um, classic um, loss function, we get this kind of output. It's a bit noisy. Uh, but if we um, use uh, another kind of loss function, as uh, this, uh, this two one, we are far more um, designed to, to take in, um, uh, in charge uh, the semantic um, of, um, um, of the, the feature. Uh, we can, uh, um, as a direct output, uh, get something really more accurate and without all the noise uh, that a classical uh, loss function could, uh, could bring us. And so the point here is to, to have something um, sharp enough to um, um, avoid the need of a post-process uh, on, the, on the output. And as you can bet, uh, what we use here in uh, RoboSet Pink is a Lovatch uh, semantic loss. Um, the other point, uh, as since we got um, the ecosystem um, able to um, uh, to deal with, um, with data and to train it uh, in, in order to, um, to get a, a train model uh, is what kind of data could we use to, um, um, to, train, the, um, to train the model. Uh, the fact is uh, we don't have at, at this moment um, a, really, um, a reliable uh, open data set for um, geospatial data uh, because all the labels we, uh, we can grab are some, some part of cre creepy or not that accurate. Uh, and one point is to say, okay, how could we uh, bootstrap um, um, a good um, uh, open data set? Uh, the, uh, the point here is to say, okay, we can uh, reuse the open data to do that uh, as since we are able to filter them. So how, how could we do that? Um, by reusing uh, imagery from an open data. In this example, I took an example from a city in, in France. Uh, we provide open data um, as a services. Uh, it's Lyon. Uh, and so I grab uh, with um, um, WMS the imagery from, um, from an area. And here it's the, um, the coordinate from this area. So um, here, this is a robot set pink um, um, tools command. Um, and with the only two um, commands, we can bring the imagery and uh, add um, a tool to, um, to visualize it with the flat. We do the same with, lab with the labels. And so with the labels, we uh, grab um, a geodeson um, uh, with a um, roof print from, um, from the very same um, area and we rasterize them uh, to convert uh, from a vector to um, a two raster uh, kind of data. And um, as soon as we do that, we can split the data um, between um, a training and a validation. Uh, and here there's a few commands to help to, to split. And if we launch um, a first uh, training, um, we get uh, as an accuracy um, something um, after only 10 epochs um, only on the building classification with already like um, this kind of result. So it's already um, quite good, uh, but it's, uh, we'll see how to improve it. Um, and uh, to improve it, the point is uh, to uh, remove all the um, labels who are not accurate enough uh, to be used as a training um, in the training data set. So uh, if we look at the very uh, first uh, predict uh, uh, result, it's as simple as to launch uh, on the um, train model uh, with the image uh, to, to create new mask um, in the output. Uh, how to detect um, if um, some prediction are or not um, good enough um, is to launch a compared um, command um, between what um, uh, we are supposed to, to get and what is created um, in the output. 
and uh, um, we um, uh, use a two different kind of threshold. The first one is related to the quality we, are, uh, we want to, to, to get, and the other is related to uh, how much um, features are supposed to be in, in this style. So I think there is enough um, a feature considered in a tile and uh, if the quality is uh, below a threshold um, there is some, um, some pink uh, area or spot on the map and the point is to, um, to see that there is a um, um, wool area where uh, it could be either uh, no feature to, to, class, to classify or good quality and there is some other parts um, where obviously there is some issue. So it's the first way uh, to, to focus uh, on, um, on places uh, who, um, uh, who could um, uh, imply that a human uh, had to check. And if we zoom in um, a bit and, and more, uh, indeed in the places where um, some uh, squares are spotted, uh, it could mean that, uh, for instance, labels uh, are missed in the input data and that there is something to, um, uh, um, to, to do. Uh, just to, to explain you, in pink, it's what is um, predicted by the model. So it's from the imagery what, what we predict. In, um, in green, it's what is supposed to be uh, from the label. So it's uh, from the GeoJSON um, file we uh, re grab. And in gray, it's when both are agree. It's, um, so it means that both the prediction and the label uh, all um, agree on these very same pixels. So uh, here we can uh, spot uh, at once that uh, these, um, um, these buildings uh, were supposed to be uh, on the ground um, related to the imagery are not present in the label. So uh, what we want uh, here is to remove them uh, because the core of this, um, um, of this stuff is to say that uh, if uh, we've got garbage in, uh, we will have a garbage out. So we want to remove all the labels who are not um, good enough uh, to, um, uh, to be used. Uh, and so there is um, um, another tool, still compare, but it's a side-by-side -side, um, compare uh, with the imagery and with the result. And here, uh, in this example, there is uh, some, uh, some building stuff, and uh, the label is not uh, at this moment um, um, reliable uh, on the on the imagery. So, on this on this on this really want uh, on this really one um, because we selected um, um, with a, um, a lower quality of a result, we can by a, a human operation remove it, uh, and once we remove all the all, the, all those uh, were not. Um, uh, good enough, we can uh, remove them and launch again the training. And if we launch uh, again with uh, um, an accurate um, training data set, um, the quality of the results rise up. And obviously, uh, if we um, um, train it longer, the quality will still um, rise um, uh, and, and will be better. So it's the first um, way to um, uh, save your time uh, either to, um, to grab um, uh, data, to filter it, uh, as since you are able to, um, to get a good result uh, um, for a trained model. And if we look um, uh, at the output, uh, once we train it, um, we can compare side by side that, uh, for instance, both are, are um, uh, in line, so the imagery is um, uh, in line with both the prediction and the labels, or there, that there is uh, obviously some uh, some change, uh, some changes uh, between the imagery and the labels. Uh, for instance, this part or, of the roof um, were not present on the initial label, so it's a change. Or the, the, it could be also um, um, a false prediction. Um, in this case, it's a um, false negative because this one should be in uh, a building. Um, and the point there, um, once we are able to do that between um, the open data uh, and uh, the imagery, is to say, okay, what could we do now with OpenStreetMap data? So we grab uh, OpenStreetMap, 
um, we uh, extract um, uh, from the PDF to a JSON, rasterize it on the really same way than before, and we can compare um, the result from the model we trained uh, before uh, between the <coughs> OpenStreetMap data uh, and get this kind of uh, output with, uh, for instance, here, buildings who are not uh, present on OpenStreetMap as buildings. So we'll see um, uh, just, um, just after what it could mean. And um, once we do that, we have also the ability to uh, vectorize it and to produce a new JSON and to do everything we want with that. Uh, so what, uh, what could mean the different kind of color? If uh, it's a green uh, only, um, in this case, it could mean that um, it's present on, on, on OpenStreetMap, but uh, there is nothing on the imagery uh, related. So it could be either that uh, the building was built uh, since the imagery, uh, or that uh, um, the building was destroyed uh, but still present on an open street map, or it's an open street map artifact. Uh, if it's only in pink, uh, it could mean that um, uh, it means that it's predicted by imagery, but not uh, in open street map. So um, the first um, um, frequent um, uh, use case is that um, the polygon is present in open street map and not um, uh, led, not um, with the attribute as a building. So it's it's only an area. It's not really a surface, so it's an attribute um, um, issue. Um, but it could also mean that the building is really missing in OpenStreetMap, or that the building was destroyed uh, since the imagery, or it could be also an artifact from the model prediction. Obviously, not in this case. Um, and the third kind of um, 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 thing to, to take in, um, in consideration is also that um, it could um, it's, not be, it's not because you train it uh, with uh, some uh, building label that the op OpenStreetMap label um, buildings are um, always the same. For instance, here, uh, the parking uh, are considered in OpenStreetMap as buildings. Uh, they are not considered in uh, um, the open data um, uh, from ground learning we took uh, already as a building. So uh, we have to, uh, to be... Um, uh, to be aware that we have to deal with uh, cl closer um, uh, attribute uh, classification um, between uh, the data we took as training and uh, the one we want to compare with. If we look um, about the performances, um, um, for the whole data preparation, it's something, uh, it's, it's about um, one hour or two. Um, um, if uh, we look about uh, the filtering part, uh, it's, um, it's a human part, so um, it depends on you, uh, but it's something who could be um, done in a, a small amount of time, something like one or two hours. Uh, the training part is, um, um, is um, uh, the, the part of the process who will consume the, the most of the, uh, of the time of the, of the process. So um, with GPU, uh, it's something like a 20 minute per epoch, um, so if, um, uh, if we want to training um, till, a, um, till 100 epochs, uh, it will be more than, uh, more than one day. Um, and about the prediction, um, we are able only with um, a single GPU uh, to perform up to uh, 3 megapixels per second. So it's, it's quite decent. And so the whole process uh, will took something like two days uh, between the download and all the prediction finished. Uh, on the first time. Um, and uh, yes, uh, one other point is uh, if uh, you have uh, several GPU, um, uh, it scales, so uh, you could save time on, the, on this part. On this part. Um, about the stack, uh, so Robotless Pink is um, uh, on the um, uh, reuse a lot of other um, uh, existing uh, software, obviously, um, and there are several stacks uh, indeed involved. Uh, first one here is related to um, <coughs> Um, machine learning with a PyTorch and deep learning. Uh, the other one here is related to imagery with a pillow and OpenCV. Uh, this one is related to uh, the ability to, uh, to deal with tiles. Uh, and uh, here uh, it's the um, geospatial stacks. Um, about the timeline, um, 
Um, the initial project was um, provided by um, Daniel from um, uh, initially from Mapbox, and the first release was RoboSat. Um, there were several uh, releases from uh, RoboSat till uh, the point that uh, Daniel left Mapbox, and so um, RoboSat was no longer um, maintained, and so it began to, to be RoboSat Pink to, to took. Uh, the next step and to reuse uh, uh, several um, uh, features was um, uh, initially bring to to RoboSat and to add uh, and to focus in fact more with um, the quality of uh, data rather than the extraction till now. Um, what will be the next step? The next step will, will be the ability to deal also with lower imagery resolution. So now uh, we use uh, um, Quite, uh, quite good um, imagery to, um, to perform this kind of uh, prediction, um, but it will be more interesting to be able to do so uh, with uh, imagery uh, as a Sentinel-2 um, to keep uh, improving the, uh, the prediction uh, performances. It's already good, but uh, we bet we can do far, uh, far more better. And uh, um, next step will be um, uh, also to, to provide a uh, pre-trained model uh, to, um, um, uh, to allow you to directly predict uh, and to not have to train uh, again a model from ImageNet, but to, 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 to directly a pre-trained model, um, maybe to, pr to train it a bit with your really kind of imagery, uh, but to save time on the, um, on the training part. Um, as a takeaway, um, so um, right now uh, you can have a um, uh, state of art uh, uh, semantic segmentation ecosystem um, available and playful. It's only a few common lines. Uh, um, you can use a plain open data uh, to train a model, um, and um, the, um, the next step will be to, um, to improve uh, the predict um, speed performances to be able to scale at large because here we are talking about um, a big city. Uh, we are not talking about um, 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 a country or a continent or, or the world. Uh, so if we want to, to scale at large, we bet uh, that uh, this, this, um, uh, this path will mean. And that's it. <coughs> Thanks. Questions from the audience. I see one there. Uh, Would you sort of, uh, speak up a little for the microphone? Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, regarding the performance yeah. figures, uh, the, the two hours for manual filtering and yeah. the 20 minutes <coughs> break. Yeah. Um, for which, for, for what number of tiles are they? Um, um, on the manual filtering, um, we um, um, so on the on the um, the training, uh, it's something like. Um, 2,000 uh, tiles, uh, each of um, um, 50, uh, 12, uh, um, five, uh, 512 pixel um, square. Um, and um, about the manual filtering, um, I grow something like um, um, 100, um, it's um, 1,000 tiles, and I remove something half uh, about them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Please. How specific is the model it builds to a particular region of the world? Um, the model on the train is our first specific to the kind of imagery we grab. So if you grab a different kind of imagery with a different uh, radio, um, uh, radiometric uh, calibration, uh, your, um, your model uh, will not be uh, that good first and uh, uh, if uh, you, you change uh, um, your, uh, your landscape um, indeed um, it will not be accurate either so um, if you want um, a model uh, able to scale you have to cherry pick um, a lot of different kind of landscape uh, to, to have something uh, able to to be representative to to what you are supposed to, to classify, okay. and it's it's a part of the process uh, to be sure that uh, you get enough uh, of each different kind of landscape to train your model. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was one question. Uh, the same question as well. oh, okay. Um, question about 
have you thought about or tried to use the system for other features, other than uh, uh -huh. buildings? Yeah. Um, right now, um, uh, on Robust at Pink, um, there is uh, already the ability to extract roads uh, from, uh, from the PDF, so that's the first part. And uh, as since you get um, uh, as soon as you get the labels here, you can specify what you want. So uh, even if right now you can already grab uh, easily um, buildings and roads, uh, if you have already other kind of feature you want to classify, uh, it's, um, it's up to you. The only point is that um, uh, what you uh, what you want to classify should not be um, too sparse on the um, on the landscape. So uh, for buildings and roads, uh, it's not an issue. Uh, but if you want to, um, to classify something really specific, uh, it could be a, a bit uh, a bit tricky. Um, if uh, if your model is um, is trained to say um, always no, uh, uh, it will be difficult for him to, to say yes when he have to. So um, as since it's not too sparse, it will be fine. Anybody else a question? We are really good in time, so please take it from You know maybe about what uh, what <coughs> will be ready for sentiment two imagery? You were saying what's the next steps? Yeah, um, the point on um, the point here to um, to be able to um, uh, to use it uh, with um, um, uh, with lower resolution um, I will be on two uh, uh, on two part. First one is uh, with Sentinel-2, um, uh, we have a multi-band um, data, and so right now, um, Robust Pink is able to, to deal with uh, multi-band uh, imagery for training, uh, but not yet for prediction. So uh, it's something um, who must be improved. And the other part is the resolution. So um, here we, um, we play with um, um, alpha meter resolution per pixel, and here we are talking about 10 meter per pixel. So, obviously, um, obviously we perfectly know uh, we can't um, perform feature extraction from a low resolution, but uh, we um, uh, we want to be able to um, to perform a quality of data, um, uh, and so to, to spot if uh, in a place. Um, for instance, buildings are missing or roads are missing. So not uh, to, to perform a feature extraction level, but, able, um, but uh, to be able to say that here um, the, is, um, something is missing or something is not um, accurate enough, and so a human has to, have to check it again. Um, one key will be the ability to, um, uh, to use a super pixel um, um, solution um, who can uh, help uh, to, um, uh, to increase uh, the quality of um, um, an imagery uh, when you zoom in. It's a, it's a kind of interpolation, but with a better um, uh, output um, resolution. Um, I would like to know how difficult is it to get fair imagery to use for your algorithm? Because I think having that at a high frequency to see changes would be important. Um, so the point is, um, as since you're, we are using um, neural networks, uh, they are able to uh, to learn uh, patterns from the, from the imagery. As since you provide enough information. So for instance, uh, one thing um, a bit tricky with a classical um, classification uh, system is uh, to handle shadows. Um, and here, uh, we don't have to bother with that because we provide enough information and labels, and so um, the, um, the neural network is able to deal with. Is no, it your question? No, I didn't catch it exactly. Okay. I was rather asking about the image data sources. Yeah. How to deal with that? Because I think that can be difficult. From which satellites to get your images from? Ah. To get it often once a week, once a year. Um, in this uh, in this uh, example, um, I use uh, open data uh, because uh, it's available and because uh, on this ca use case um, they are uh, quite recent. Uh, if um, we uh, are talking about um, uh, Sentinel-2, uh, it's a it's a week. 
uh, update. So uh, as since there is no cloud, uh, you can uh, you can you can pick uh, the um, uh, your your time frame um, as you want okay. uh, or as you need. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Perhaps you have a question to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you see, um, 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 does it change something to you? Uh, is it uh, something who, who could uh, open some new usage uh, from, uh, from uh, or, not, or not yet? Well, um, in my case, like if we are using training data for classification and when yep. we want to retrieve training data of non-forest, for instance, uh -huh. Uh, it's really a uh, pain in the ass to clean the yeah. training data yeah. for roads, buildings. Yeah. So this could be going there yeah. to Yeah. Mm -mm. Do you think it's got potential to be better at humans than spotting things, at spotting things in low quality imagery? Mm -hmm. it, it's designed for. Yeah, it's, it's a, the first design is that. And um, I think we got. Um, 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 a good quality on the prediction, we can perform a feature extraction. But the first point, as, as you said both, is to help to save time on the um, uh, training data set um, qualification and then to qualify um, the a data set to something else. So yes, uh, the point is to spot where a human um, has to give a look and so to save his time. Hmm. Your question, uh, yeah. see from the, the standpoint of the user, yeah. um, because M data is, uh, well, depends on the, the, the walk den or the, the visit density, the, uh -huh. um, how frequently a place uh, has been visited, mm -hmm. and um, if it's, well, if it's, uh, how, how could you call it, an outbound area or somewhere where mm -hmm. um, some, some, some dead end street or so, um, then there are many cases when uh, when you find ways or buildings or whatever uh -huh. features uh, which you haven't found on on the website, mm -hmm. and um, it might be a possibility, for instance, before the next vacation, to simply run over this area, to run over satellite images of this area, and then you you get better maps for this area. This this would be an option, but um, uh, to just to um, and to shrink the hope is uh, the last recent time this happened to me was uh, mm -hmm. two weeks ago uh, or so, and uh, it was in the wood. <laughs> mm -hmm. So no, uh, no possibility to find them with, uh, with satellite images. Mm -hmm. But anyway, in other cases, yes, uh, mm -hmm. I made this experience in the past, and mm -hmm. the user, as I said, and uh, it would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question. Sorry. <coughs> I have a use case, but I haven't yet looked at the mm -hmm. data available in uh, OSM mm -hmm. uh, to identify graves in a cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it would be uh, possible to, to use your um, um, The point is really to um, first to, um, uh, to think about uh, sparsity, and the second is um, do you have um, labels accurate enough, yes or no? I uh, think you, um, these two points um, um, are okay. Uh, it uh, it leads to uh, to play more uh, on your use case. Uh, the first point um, um, is it uh, too sparse? It, it really depends on which which area you take you take in charge. Uh, if you, you you took only specific area related to graves. Um, of to cemetery, um, it could be not the, uh, that sparse, but you will need uh, uh, an high resolution and um, imagery, and you will need um, um, detail, um, labeled, uh, labels accurate enough to train a model. So, as soon as you um, you get that, uh, you can uh, you, you can play with. But uh, if uh, you only have um, plain imagery and took the whole uh, uh, the, um, the whole city area and one to spot the grave, um, it will be difficult. Could one also use it 
for me, we work at Navit more with GPS navigation. Would be also possible to detect, for example, road construction to send at that. Yeah, because it, because it will be um, a chain detection. It will be something like that. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can uh, you can spot it. Yeah, that's yes. more use case from our side maybe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. So okay, so thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'd like to invite the next speaker to collect his feedback in or perhaps his one that is available. Oh, sorry. I How's it going? Hi, I'm Mark. Hi, Mark. Nice to meet you too. It's, uh, we are really uh, good for time, but I'm going to have to be strict that we have a schedule mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. So, um, my question is, we are scheduled from 9.45 to 10.50, mm -hmm. and maybe we want to leave some five to ten minutes, mm -hmm. possibly a question and answer yeah, session. Yeah. No problem. Okay. I'll, uh, Let's see if we can figure this out. out. Time, I'm going <laughs> to give you some fast words. Uh, oh, that's that's going to be helpful. Well, I can keep my phone here so I can... Okay. Uh, the AD the sound system doesn't seem to work properly, so if you could talk a little bit louder, no. that's hopefully no problem. No problem. Is this something I have to wear? Yeah, that's what was the audio thing, the oh, microphone. Okay. That is a little bit uh, if you. Uh, you want to say something like that or not? Uh, let me see if this works first. Um, Oh, there you go. I think it's my mail over there. <laughs> okay. But for some reason, um, no, it's online. Like I just need a uh, internet access. So basically, I just need to go to. You know to to play with? Oh, this. This next, previous Obviously, it's um, a few specific places, but uh, there is a <coughs> 